Hi, I am Serge Stiles and this is A State of Consciousness. A State of Consciousness is a podcast on mental health in the music industry, but uh, with the hopes that what the guests discuss with me on every episode can help people who are not necessarily of the music industry. My guest today is Julian Jordan, an electronic music uh, producer and DJ from the Netherlands, who's had a very uh, productive career and a very a very solid career as well from a very young age, but he will tell us more about it himself. Hi, Julian. Welcome. How are you? What's up? I'm good. I'm, uh, I'm very good. I'm uh, in the studio right now working, uh, making sure everything is prepared for uh, Miami Music Week. Um, so, yeah, that's been uh, what I've been working on. And, yeah, man, I've been touring a lot, uh, making music. Um, thanks for the introduction, by the way um so yeah i've been touring for more than 10 years already uh started when i was 15 uh i'm 28 now so uh yeah i'm al already touring for a lot of time and um yeah i'm having fun i'm having fun touring i'm having fun uh producing music and um yeah that's how it goes part of stamped records and i'm very happy to be uh touring still and uh, playing my music everywhere so yeah that's it so how, how did you start? What was the reason you started? And what has been your path, let's say, from then until now in the music industry? Um, I think it started like it started for everyone. Um, it was kind of a hobby. Um, back when I was, I think, 12 years old, I was discovering electronic music. I was uh, discovering production software. Um, and my father gave me uh, FL Studio, the software to make music with. And, you know, I was just messing around with it, just just didn't take it too serious, but I was still in love with making music. Um, I've been already a drummer for uh, since I can remember. So music was always in my blood. And, yeah, it just kind of happened. I was making music. I was having fun with it. And then all of a sudden... Um, yeah, I, I got to a point where I was confident enough to upload my own creations on uh, social media like SoundCloud. And yeah, that's how it all started, just uploading music. And um, I didn't take it too serious. My, my, my path or my goal was never to be famous or my goal was never to be a DJ producer. I just loved making music. And that's when, you know, it all, uh, that's how it all started. Okay, since you mentioned it, has the change in attention you're receiving affected you in a positive or a negative way on how you see your work or your life um, or everyday things? It's a funny question. Uh, it's a good question because I think about this a lot. Um, my life changed completely. I, um, I love playing music uh, for like, big crowds now I love to inspire fans I love to meet new people uh, see the world so I'm very thankful and blessed for for that um, but like in producing ways I never experienced um, pressure like I never experienced um, hopes like I never had a fan base when I started I didn't have a fan base so I made music that I liked I didn't think about the outcome I didn't think about the output I was just making music because I liked it um, and when you grow a certain fan base and when you grow uh, attention and you get recognized, uh, people expect stuff from you. And, you know, it's, it's kind of a pressure that's on you when you are making music for fun and suddenly it becomes serious and suddenly it becomes a business. Um, you also have to think a bit about the crowd and you have to think a bit about other stuff that you didn't have to think about before. So um the creative part of my job um yeah that's a good way to see it it like my hobby turned into a job so i had to take it serious and i had to think about stuff that i didn't have to think about before so it kind of surprised me that um it affected my creative process a lot you have to think about crowds reacting to your music you have to think about is it going to perform well and if you think about that too much, uh, it will ruin your creative process. So um, I had to deal with that, and I had to learn how to um, let go of my of, of expectations and to go back to 
the reason why I started and just having fun making music. So yeah, it did change a lot and I'm happy to be back at the point where I'm just thinking like, okay, I just want to make music, I want to have fun and I want to do what I like and not what people expect me to do. Was it a specific process? Was there something that happened in your head, in your mind and said, I'm, I'm stopping being pressured by the expectations, I'm going to do what I want? Or did you have to go through, did you have to practice something or, or think a certain way or do certain things in order to get back to the mind state that you wanted to be? Um, I think it's, I can speak for almost every creative. If you are going through this uh, period where you are doing something and you get success, and it's super easy to, to, to keep doing the same thing, but it doesn't satisfy you because you are using the same ingredients and you're making like the same dish the whole time. It's like at the end, it's going to get boring and you want to, you want to challenge yourself sometimes, you know, you want to make new stuff. You want to challenge yourself. And um, in the beginning, maybe people are going to be disappointed by that because you are not doing what they expect you to do. Um, but then again, that's all part of the process. So I had to really go through that process to see, um, yeah, to see if people liked it. But I'm very blessed with a fan base that is very adapting. So uh, my fan base really loves what I'm doing. Of course, you always have people that don't really feel your new sound or the way you like music or the way you think or your new vision. But then again, they're not meant to be there. It's always about the people that move with you. And then I think that's the most important. And at the end, in the, in the end you, you don't do it for other people. You do it for yourself. And that's also a thing that you have to keep in mind as a creative. Okay, so in, in, in the years you've been doing this uh, and making music and performing, you've had an amount of positive and amount of negative experiences. Do you think that one or the other has a stronger effect on you or that, does it um, work as a motivator better than its counterpart? Um, I think it's uh, always really important, especially for your mental health, to um, focus more on the positive aspects. Um, of course, there's negative sides, but I would rather look at the positive sides because there are so many positive sides where I'm happy and blessed to be doing what I'm doing right now. Um, so if you if you focus on like the negative things too much, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be like um, a bit of a downfall for you because you will feel like you will feel the pressure, you will feel like you're tired, you will feel like it's not worth it. You will feel like um, the negative parts are bigger than the positive parts. But in the end, if you if you can can um, I don't know how to say it in English, but if you can put the positive things above the negative things, then it's all worth it. Because in the end, it's everything has negative sides. Every job in the world, everything that you do, there's always negative and positive. But as long as you keep the positive things. Um, bigger and as long as you focus on the positive i think it's um it's a it's a better way to maintain your career do, do you sometimes view or treat your job as any other job in the world not really um and and that's because i have the same friends that i started when i was uh, young um, and i see reality i see like what other people have to do in their life i see careers that people have to do I, I see like people that have to make money for their families that have to struggle uh every day to you know get their kids to school that have uh two jobs and i really keep that in mind to see like okay this is reality and what i'm doing is actually a very big blessing you know i of course um if you're a dj money is coming in, but that's not the, the most important thing I think about it is that you are doing something that you love to do and you don't have to do it. You don't have to be um, working for a boss. You don't have to be uh, doing something that you actually don't like to do. So I think the biggest blessing about what I'm doing is that I'm actually doing something that is my passion. And I always try to remember uh, that in the end. Yeah, but um, does that sometimes make you feel more responsible towards 
um, your fans or the people who have paid the ticket to see you live on a show rather than yourself? Um, you know, I, I always think like life is a bit, uh, it's a bit unfair anyway. Um, and the reason why I, I got into this is because I followed my feeling, my, my gut feeling. And there's a reason why I attracted fans and there's a reason why I'm like selling shows. And that's because people share the same feeling as you and they share the same emotion. So I'm always trusting my gut feeling in this and I'm, I don't really feel responsible. I just try to go from my gut feeling and uh, move on, you know, move on with that. And if fans like it, then I'm the happiest person on earth. If they don't, then, you know, I'm not going to adapt to what someone else wants me to do or what someone else expects me from me. Then I just, you know, I, uh, I never think about this too much because as a creative, you're like an artist. You, you, you want to make art and you want to make good art. And if you are an artist that works for other people, um, I think you are a boring artist, you know? So you always have to be a good good artist and listen to your uh, artistic heart. That's the most important, I think. Uh, do you also, though, um, listen to your body and your mind to make sure that when they're telling you that something's wrong, you can take care of yourself? I learned to do that. Um, I, um, I really had to listen to myself a bit more because in the beginning, I was saying yes to everything, every show, everything that I did was yes, let's go, let's go. But in the end, in the beginning, you don't feel like um, it's going to be hard. You think like everything is welcome, all the shows, you can travel there, you can travel to Asia, you can travel to America, uh, all in the same week. Oh, one, one show in Asia, let's go. One show in the US, let's go. Let's do everything. But when you are doing it, you, you feel the pressure and you feel the how tiring it is sometimes. So I started to learn to listen to my body more and to think about uh, planning in tours and planning in ways to um, give myself some rest. Because when you're rested and you feel better, then also you make better music. So if you are only doing it for the short run and you're doing as much as possible, everything will be affected by it. So also the creative part. So I think you have to see it as a long run instead of getting as much as possible in the shortest period. Okay, can I ask uh, what you do for rest then? Um, what I do for rest, it's kind of funny because I feel um, I get my 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 power and strength from um, my friends and family. So whenever I come home from a tour, I love to see my friends, girlfriend, family. I love to be down on down, you know, down on the ground with my family, having a simple time, having good dinner, um, enjoying my friends and my family, my parents, you know, it's so simple, but it's, it's, it's super, super effective for me. Um, also working out is very work, uh, very good. Um, trying to, you know, also have a few parties with my friends going out. I think that's also super important because for me, that's, that's also a way of, of life to enjoy, t enjoy the time that you have on this earth with your uh, loved ones. And when I'm on tour, I'm seeing my fans, but I'm not seeing my friends or family that much. So um, the only thing that I miss when I'm on tour is that part. So that's giving me the rest when I'm back home. Okay, so this is this is great and this is very interesting because, uh, like a bit earlier, you were saying that when you started, you were trying to grab any opportunity you could to to, to do a gig and do this song and yeah, visit that country and play there and do that. And and yeah. and also now you're saying that what you do for rest is that you uh, spend time with loved ones. And here's Correct. the thing. Yeah. When we first met, um, you were, I think you were 16 years old, maybe 17, in Cyprus. Yeah, in, in, yeah, yeah, in Cyprus. Yeah. yeah, you were here for a show with uh, Martin and Dub Vision. And I was talking to you and I had a similar conversation with your manager then as well, that since your manager then was basically your legal guardian when you were on tour, uh, in order, he... he he said in order for like you guys to have a good communication and a good relationship uh, because uh, you were teenagers uh, that he told you like as long as you follow my rules 
while on tour, uh, whatever you want from me, whatever you can ask and I can give you, like I will do it. And what you requested back then was that you don't want to tour for a full month. You want to do three weeks and then one week off in order to come back home and spend time with your friends from school and your family. Yeah. So a, a teenager being given the option to tour the world and manager telling them, just follow my rules and I can give, like, I can give you whatever you want, could use it in any way that a 17-year-old kid would think of. Uh, but you chose one of the best ways of self-care I've seen, like people who are doing it for 30 years. Um, yeah. And so I want to ask, first of all, if you remember what was it back then that made you choose that as what you wanted? And also, do you still do that? Do you still take these self-care choices so firmly uh, for, for you? It's it's funny because I was I was seventeen, I think sixteen. Sixteen. Um, and at that time, I think it's very important to make friends and um, to to go out for the first time and to experience going uh, talk to girls and stuff like that. And that's the the moment that that happens is when you're like sixteen, seventeen. And I was like um missing all the parties that my friends were doing at home so i used to go to school and then my friends say like let's go out in the weekends but in the weekends i had to perform and i could go to like cyprus or miami let's say and then my friends were just at the bar at home and um i was in miami and my friends were like oh we're so jealous you are in miami and you're on tour and you're uh, seeing the biggest clubs in the world but I was jealous of them because they were at the bar with all the friends having fun. And for me, that was a big struggle because life was not really serious back then. And I didn't really have a responsibility feeling of um, making money and uh, that this is forever and this is my job and this is the way to maintain my life. I was just thinking like, I want to see my friends and I want to go out. I want to uh, chase after girls and stuff like that. And I was playing music, but I was on tour alone, you know, so it was pretty lonely for me. Uh, still, I was meeting a lot of people, but I was a very shy guy. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't used to seeing so much new people all the time. I was just, I'm from a small town, so everything was super simple where I'm from. So, yeah, I had to really adapt to that. So the first tours I did were a big shock, like a big shock for me. And I almost got like burned out like in, in, in a month, because I didn't expect my passion to be so serious. And then that it means that I'm so lonely. So I was thinking about, okay, if you're a DJ and you're playing these festivals, you're living the life, you're doing it, you're on tour, you're having the best time of your life. And this is, this is the dream. And then you start living the dream and you realize that it's not as, <laughs> as glamorous as it seems. So that's a big, um, yeah, that's a big thing to to swallow, like a big pill, like a bitter pill to swallow at that age, especially at that age. Uh, and I'm lucky that my manager back then, Watsi, who's still uh, Martin's, uh, Martin's manager, uh, he saw that and he was like, okay, you know what you should do? Um, you definitely should have the experience with your friends and uh, let's do tours any other week, but still it's important that you do this one week a, a, a month. So you can have the proper uh, proper experience that a 16, 70 year old kid should have. Um, and yeah, I'm very thankful for that because I'm still going out with the same friends that I know from back then. And they are still my friends. So that's, uh, yeah, that's super, uh, I'm super blessed with that. Um, I'm happy you mentioned that because uh, I, I want to ask you uh, what, how big do you think is the importance of having a manager who understands these things about their artists, uh, these, these needs of their artists, not just the needs of their career, but of, of the, themselves to be well and be balanced and feel good about life in general? I think it's the most important part. Um, a manager should focus on, on the long run instead of the short run, what I was talking about earlier. It's, it's all about um, the best collaborations 
are always with people that understand you and the people that uh, are in it for you and not only the outcome. So, um, you know, you have to, and, and it's really hard because this industry is full of so many people and a lot of people that are in it for money or other reasons, but you have to choose the right people around you to, you know, maintain the right way of doing it. And um, I was lucky to be with the right people not everyone, but I was lucky to be with the right people um, in the beginning of my career, so I could, uh, you know, enjoy uh, enjoy my life a bit instead of only working. So you mentioned about when you were really young and you got to tour um, in places like the United States. So from yeah. from what I know, and I think one of these stories has to do with you as well, uh, when you were touring at that age in the United States, you weren't actually allowed in the clubs while the club was open until it was time for you to play. So you were waiting outside the club. Then five minutes Correct. before you went on, you had to like, someone took you from the back door straight into the booth, which was cleared out of alcohol or anything else. And then as soon yep. as you finished, you had to leave immediately. Which meant Correct. that, yeah. as you said, you didn't, act, you didn't have time to um, socialize with, with colleagues, with the promoters, uh, with, with people in the area, even, even fans you might have already had at that point. Um, yeah. Did that create kind of a like, sticky or difficult environment for you while touring? Um, it, 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 kinda, it was kind of nice for me because I was never the, the party kid, you know? I was never like the guy that wanted to stay for parties. Uh, when I just started out uh, and that's because I all, only wanted to party with my friends at home I didn't think about partying I, I saw it more like I want to do the best set so I was so like focused on my music that I just wanted to um, create the best set create the best music and that was my goal um, so whenever I was playing I didn't drink I was just having fun playing music and um, thinking about like going to after parties and stuff like that. I didn't really think about that. I was just like, maybe I was a bit too young for that as well, but I was just thinking about like, I want to make sick music and I want to play the best sets. And I saw it really professionally from a young age. So when I got uh, like escorted to the club and back back to the hotel, I thought it was great because I could just focus more on on my uh, on my next show. But in the end, yeah, I'm, I'm I think, I wish I, I got to experience a bit more back then because I maybe would have seen more fans and meet more people back then already. Because right now I always take the time after my show to take pictures and to, you know, to, to hear a bit of their stories. Some people, they, fl they fly out from different countries and I can imagine they want to talk to the artists a bit or take photos or whatever. And of course, sometimes that not that's not possible time wise. But uh, whenever I have time, I love to, you know, see them and talk with them and hear their stories because in the end, uh, I would have been in the same uh, shoes as them if I uh, if I were younger and I was inspired by a DJ. I just wanted to see their shows and I th wanted to talk to them, reach them. So yeah, I'm. Uh, yeah, I wish I could have stayed a bit longer back then. <laughs> okay, so then I want to ask you. Um, if someone is um, watching or listening right now and they're about to start uh, their path in the music in the music industry, what would be something that you would advise them, you would tell them to be careful of because it might hurt them in the long run? Uh, always be careful of, like I said, like the people around you, try to, you know, get the right people around you. Um, it's it's so easy to to get a manager as fast as possible and to get a label, but I don't think right now we're living in a time that that is really uh, important in the beginning. I think in the beginning the most important thing is that you create your own sound, that you work on your own music, uh, create your own style DJ wise. Uh, try to work on that first. Try to establish yourself, build your brand, think about ways to market yourself. And then, in the end, I think it's important to get the right people with you. And I don't believe in a manager that is going to make you big. Um, I believe in a manager that knows you for who you are and that knows how to push you. 
even though if the, if your manager doesn't have any other artists it can help you push yourself even more because um i think in the end the artist is always responsible for the outcome the artist is always responsible for the output and nowadays with the internet um everything is possible you see like people from their bedrooms uh breaking through like for instance martin and me we we started when we were younger on, on and we were still in school in our bedroom so everything is possible you don't need like a magical label you don't need like a magical manager that's going to make you big all you need is the right people uh that support you and the right people that help you and you can build like a crazy crazy empire by just working with your friends or your brother or your family you know i still see uh my father is still involved uh martin's father is still involved um so many friends that i know right now i'm working with two of my best friends they are both on my team and you know it's 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 a blessing to work with them because they know me and they will never take advantage of me and they will push me even more and they are also eager to push me they are eager to push me um as a bigger artist than I than I am, so um, I am uh, very uh, happy with that, and I would I would recommend that just go with the people that you love and that trust you, and you can move mountains with uh, with just some people that 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 really support you. Um, you also mentioned the the use of internet, which can help assist in the career, um, and also you were saying about how the artist is clearly responsible for all 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 the outcomes that have to do with with themselves and do you also think that though the the internet um has added some extra pressures on on what an artist has to to put out um i do i do it's it's a different world right now um and as harsh as it may sound i think if you don't adapt you will not make it so i think it's like a more entrepreneurial way to think um making music is not enough you should focus more on um branding what makes you you and try to build that image more um i wouldn't say it's necessary to um to do everything I, I do think music comes first i do think that i do believe that i want to believe that let's say it like that but if you fully gonna ignore the importance of like uh social media um then i think you're missing out on a lot of stuff and i think it's very easy to say like oh i'm just a producer i want to make music but if you want to make it right now you could take advantage of social media and make yourself even bigger so I would say always see yourself as a brand and see yourself as as a product that you have to push sometimes. And it, I don't want it to sound like I'm pushing a, a product, but it's more like see yourself as like something you would sell to other people. And and then I think you can make it. I think it's in, there's importance behind it right now because the, the new generation, they just want to consume and you have to play with it a little bit, I think. If someone is watching or listening this right now and they're going through a tough time, what would you like to say to them? Um, I would say uh, you're not alone. You know, everyone, I think everyone has moments in their life where they are going through dark times. Um, but yeah, it sounds cliche, but in the end, it's true. I think there's always light at the end of the tunnel. And uh better times will always be there especially when you're in a dark period um you cannot go lower at, at a certain point you will always climb up in the end and it could be because of uh, new people you meet uh it could be because of things you see that inspire you uh it could be of a change in your life that is going to be a positive change but um in the end, it's life is worth it, and uh, you can find beauty in simple things. You can find beauty in going outside, looking outside, see other people, see the nature. Um, you know, enjoy life and um, try to look at the simple things around you. Count your blessings. See what you still have, and don't focus on what you don't have. 
a, a side of social media is that we always look for stuff we don't have. So we see nice things. We see people that are successful. We see uh, people that are making money. We see people that are living a better life than us. But in the end, they are not living a better life. They maybe have better uh, resources than some of us. But in the end, everyone is facing their own struggles and they can have completely different struggles than, than we have or other people have. But in the end, it's all about the simple things in life. Count your blessings, see who's behind you, see who's with you. And you can have a good time with yourself as well, as long as you know that in the end, everything works out. And trust, I trust myself on that because I've been through some times that I was like, am I doing the right thing? Am I happy? And then in the end, may take weeks, may take months, may take years. You are going to be happy that you didn't give up and that you start, uh, stayed believing in yourself. So that's my message to uh, everyone. All right. This is excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, I loved, ha loved having you. You said amazing things. And I'm sure a lot of people will find things to connect on and um, uh, things that they can find that could help them. Thank you for coming on A State of Consciousness. And I hope to catch you very, very soon. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you. Very nice questions. That was Julian Jordan for this episode of A State of Consciousness. I am Serge Styles. Uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and help spread the message as far and wide as possible. Thank you for watching or listening, and I'll catch you at the next one. Ciao.